Welcome to Adrian Beck's Author Hangouts, and I have Felice Arena with me today. Adrian. How are you, Felice? <laughs> Very well, thank you, Adrian. <laughs> Excellent. Now we're going to learn all about Felice Very Arena. Professional. Professional. Always Ooh, professional. Yes. Yeah. Like, you love it. And I'm you? excited. Yeah, and you can have a biscuit if you want. I baked plate. them this now, morning. I've watched this. No one really eats the cookies. Well, you can if you want. It's you up know to what the author. Me of? What does it remind you of? And I'm not sure for some of the, the more mature mm. viewers. Yeah. Uh, uh, the teachers. Are, no. <laughs> not the teachers. Well, they're a little older than the kids. <laughs> older than the kids. <laughs> yes. You know Cookie Monster from Sesame Street? Yes. And you sort of just. <laughs> well, go for your life. Cookie <laughs> Monster. <laughs> 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 I love it. Sorry. No, I love it. <laughs> that wasn't quite That's a good start. Um, oh, now, actually, they're really good. They are good. I baked them myself. Now, Felice, you yes. are a superstar within the industry. Within my own backyard. <laughs> he told me to say that. <laughs> no, but you are the I man behind it. Specky McGee and most recently The Boy and the Spy. Did it start at Specky McGee or did it start Ooh, somewhere else? it started way back. I think you need to put some harp music back. <laughs> this is, we're going to go way, way, way back. I can do that myself. Way back <laughs> to the decade. Called the 90s. The 90s. That's a long time ago. Now. <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> and what happened in the 90s? Apart living... from you watching a lot of, uh, well, listening to a lot of Take That. Dancing for Spice Girls. Yes. Uh, no. Uh, way back in the 90s, I was living in England, and oh, right. I was working as an actor uh, okay. in the West End in the theatre district there, and working on stage and singing and dancing. And, really? And um, would the kids know any of the uh, productions that you might have starred in? No. Oh. <laughs> yes, they would actually. Aladdin. Oh, Aladdin. I was Aladdin in Aladdin. You were Aladdin in Aladdin. I was Aladdin. I know it's fantastic. <laughs> so, Felice, tell me this. How did you go from being a theatre superstar to writing kids' books? Well, well, eventually I thought, you know what, I'm going to try to write a book. I'm not sure how you do that, but I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write a page each day. It was performing in the evenings, had my days free. Yep. Uh, and I wrote a page a day, and at the end of three months or so, I had myself a book. Wow. And I approached a, a literary agent, someone who tries to sell books to yep. publishers, and uh, this literary agent read my book and he said, Felice, Felice, Felicky. Felicky. <laughs> you know this story. <laughs> However you say your name, yeah. I, think, I like it. I like it. Yeah. I think you might have a telephone writing for young people. And before I knew it, uh, he sent it off and I was offered a two book deal. Fantastic. With, uh, a publisher. What was the name of his first book? It was called Dolphin Boy Blue about a swimmer in Australia who made it all the way to the National Swimming Championships and he believed that there was a dolphin swimming out in the bay that was coaching him along, helping him. Well, you know what? That's kind of interesting because back when you were a youngster, <laughs> you were quite a good swimmer, weren't you? Yes, you've done your research. Yes, <laughs> and you sort of you didn't have all the facilities that perhaps some of the city no, kids might have. No, I didn't, and this is a story I, I perhaps I should write. Every, I, I, Talk about this story. I grew up in country uh, Victoria, yep. and uh, we used to go. We had a swimming pool in our hometown, in the town of Kyabram. But one summer, I made it to the national school swimming championships, or to the state swimming championships as well. Great. But the swimming pool closed at the end of February, and the championships uh, were scheduled for April, end of April. So I had oh, a couple so of months. Two months without any practice. Swimming. Where do I swim? In the bath. Well, I tried that. <laughs> I tried the bath. You had to get Kept so far. my head. <laughs> Oh, one lap, <laughs> two laps, three laps. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, irrigation channels. Irrigation Far channels? Farming channels, yes, irrigation channels. Uh, there was a, a current and I would swim wow. from one bridge to the, the next bridge. Yep. My dad would drive his car along the banks of the irrigation channels, listening to the, to the races, and he said, keep going, and I'd swim against the current, yep. and I'd train for an entire month or six weeks. Um, it was very Rocky, if you know the film Rocky. Absolutely, um, it's a classic. It is a classic. Kids, check it out. Yes, uh, and I made it all the way to the National Swimming Championship. And then you... In the big city, here in Melbourne. And? And? Did you... I won! <laughs> Did you win? <laughs> Blew him out of the water. Did you really? Yes. Wow. Yeah, I won. And broke the record. Really? Yeah, when I was 13 years old. How about that? So the following year, I thought, well, we have to repeat it again. Let's try it again. So we're back in the irrigation channel yeah. training. Yeah. But this time I decided to get my mates involved. So we had a relay team. Now my mates weren't swimmers, <laughs> they were footballers. And I remember they didn't want to wear Speedos. <laughs> There's no way, Fleech, we're going to wear Speedos. We're staying in our football shorts. But they swam in their footy shorts. Yes. Right. Against all the private schools when we moved to, <laughs> came to the city to really? compete against them. And guess what? 
You didn't. We won. You won again. <laughs> So maybe that's the, that's the secret to winning a swimming race. Swimming, no, you're not, you're not supposed to swim in irrigation Well, channels. certainly not these days, I'm back sure. Then, back, <laughs> back then you could no, do it. These days then. you can't do it. No, no, no. Yeah. no. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Perhaps that's the story I should write. I think you should. Yeah. That's, that's, that's an amazing story. Yeah. So then your footy mates, did they inspire you to go on and do your Specky McGee later in life? They did, line? and of course I went to school with the, my co-author of uh, Specky McGee, oh, yes. Gary Lyon, and I do remember taking a, a, an awesome Specky Marv over the top of the great AFL green. Where did you? In. Yes, he was in grade six, so I was in grade five. And <laughs> so he was he older got, than you as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then you moved from that. How come you moved into historical adventure stories? You know, I've been wanting to write uh, a story like this for a long time. There's, yep. I'm known for writing for action and movement in my stories, yeah, especially absolutely. Speck and McGee and the Sporty Kids and Andy Roy. There's a lot of action and movement. But I also love travel and I love history. And so I thought, is there a way I can combine all that yep. in one book? So with The Boy and the Spy, finally I was given the chance to be able to write this. And I thought, I'm going to do it. This is it. Set in World War II in Sicily, where my mum comes from, from mm. the Italian Isle of Sicily in 1943. Yep. But there's still plenty of action and movement. Mm. At the core of it, there is a heart to this story mm. as well. This is just the first step in this new journey of yours because... We've got a new, well, you've got a new yes, historical I have. action. I have. Novel. So, Sicily 1943, the yep. next one, it isn't a follow up, it's another just whole uh, new story. It's a whole new standalone adventure, historical yep. action, set in. Whereabouts? Are we going to announce it? Does Wangaratta? <laughs> Wangaratta! <laughs> Wang. We're off to Wang, 1956. No, um, and hello to everyone in Wangaratta. Whom we love. <laughs> um, no, it's set in Paris. 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 Parigi. Paris. Fantastic. City of Light. In fact, you can tell us the name of it, and as an author hangout exclusive, you can reveal. This is an exclusive. The isn't cover. It? This is an absolute exclusive. Unless if you're I'm, watching this as soon I've as it, the yeah, before then. If you're watching no. this as soon as it goes up, it is an exclusive. But if you're watching it a few months later, then uh, you might have seen the book in stores. Yes. But as of right now, okay. we're living in the moment. This is it. We're going to reveal the name and the cover. Drum Over roll, to you. please. Fearless Frederick. Fearless Frederick. And on the screen, you can see the cover it's there. Fearless. How good does it that is look? It is set in Paris, 1910. Yep. Paris in 1910 had its greatest flood in its history. And I thought this would make an epic, epic backdrop to an epic adventure. I've had so much fun researching this story. And for the ones who follow me on Instagram at Fleech, F-L-E-E-C-H, yes. they've seen along the way, they've seen that I, uh, I've gone to, uh, yep. I've just come back from Paris. And, uh, Not a bad perk of being no, a writer. No, no, I did some research there. Yep. It was a lot, a lot of fun. Fantastic. Well, thank yep. you for sharing the, uh, the cover with us, Fleech. It? It's very exciting. Thank you, thank you. Um, we know that uh, it's going to be another, another huge smash, like The Boy and the Spy was, of course. Um, so we are going to segue beautifully and yep. seamlessly into some of your writing tips and uh, I know you've got some brilliant ones. One of them of course is to go to Paris if you're going to write a story about I Paris. Think, yes, or we'll go to your favourite city <laughs> in the world. Yeah, and then write a story why about not? it. Uh, why Easy. Not? Anyway, that's coming up next. Coming up, Felice's writing tips get a bit musical, if you could call it that. And later, a French themed challenge. Mmm, snails, they look tasty. 